Hello, my name is Adonis Rivera. I am the poet intern at the Counseling Center and the Wellness Coalition. I'm here today to present the topic of toxic masculinity. And to further explain what is toxic masculinity, here's a video. With all these men getting fired and accused of sexual harassment, the phrase toxic masculinity is in the air in everything from sexual assault to mass shootings. But what is toxic masculinity? Masculinity refers to performed behaviors that have been attributed to manhood. Toxic refers to a subset of violent, destructive, or oppressive behaviors performed in an attempt to live up to a mythological idea of masculinity. Think Batman, for example. He's intelligent, self-sacrificing, and dedicated to justice. Great! But some of his behavior is toxic. His aggression, emotional detachment, and misogynistic control over women are all forms of toxic masculinity. We're not saying that men are toxic, but their behavior can be. Everyone is capable of these behaviors. Let's look at both sides. People who see these images as homophobic say that these jokes don't actually hurt Trump or Putin. They merely hurt queer people by reinforcing the idea that there's something funny about same-sex attraction and that homosexuality makes you less of a man. They see the images as bottom shaming, shaming people who prefer to be sexually subservient to others. Reinforcing these ideas encourages widespread homophobia, the sort of homophobia that encourages others to mock, harass, bully, abuse, or even kill queer people. If you've ever been bullied yourself for being a gross homo, these images probably don't seem like something to laugh at. People who like these images see them as a form of subversive political humor that shatters the hyper-fragile masculinity of these two ultra-masculine strongmen. I mean, Putin rides shirtless horseback and Trump brags about grabbing women by the pussy. What could be more weak and masculine than that? These images point out that their fascist brand of masculinity is a complete fraud. And because both men are rapidly anti-LGBTQ, what better way to skewer them than to literally show them in bed together? Both sides make important points, but perhaps a better question is this. Is there a way to make fun of Trump's subservience to Putin and both men's ultra-macho queerphobia without depicting them as lovers? What do you think? Now there are boys who are pathologically masculine. They are bullies and worse. They establish their male cred through destruction and mayhem and preying on weak and vulnerable people. But the large majority of American boys evince a healthy masculinity. They build rather than destroy. Their instinct is not to exploit vulnerable people, but to protect and defend them. It's true that boys need guidance and discipline from the adults in their lives. And I agree with this documentary. We shouldn't be harshly telling a troubled boy to man up. But teaching him to be a gentleman is a tried and true way to bring out the best in males. Many educators and gender scholars believe that we need to free our young men to be more emotionally expressive, just the way women tend to be. Now, of course, parents should encourage emotional literacy in their sons, but at the same time, they should keep in mind that male reticence has its advantages. Research has shown that boys do not value problem talk as much as girls. I mean, personal disclosure helps girls feel better, and makes them feel understood, according to these studies. But when they asked boys about problem talk, it wasn't that boys were ashamed or thought it was unmasculine. The boys told them that they found it a waste of time. This doesn't mean that they are emotionally impaired. The male reserve or reticence is protective and adaptive. 